All right, we might get started. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, today we're here to talk about ERP implementation plan to succeed. Um, once again, I'm joined here by Imbel Steinberg from uh, Melbourne, ConvertWorks. How are you, Imbel? I'm well, thank you, Andrew. So today, the, the aim of the webinar is to take a business through ways to improve the beginning um, of the implementation process, some key tips and tricks. Um, and we'll speak to Imbel and get her independent view um, through her experiences in a time of consulting on ERP on the best ways to improve an ERP implementation. So I myself, Andrew, I'm the partner manager here at J Kerfers Solutions for those who I haven't met before. I look after our strategic relationships with our, our, our partners um, across Australia and New Zealand. Um, Imbel, who's based in Melbourne, um, is an independent consultant. I might get you just to quickly introduce yourself, Imbel. Sure, I'm an independent technology consultant. I contract into businesses to optimize their use of technology, look at what the right systems are for them, and sometimes I work with them through the implementation of a new system just to make sure they're actually going to get the most out of it. Yeah, great. So we get some great advice from Imbul. She's been in the industry for a long time. Um, you've been working um, in the implementation area for the last seven years. Is that right, Imbul? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But you've got, you've got a background in, in computer science? In computer science, in technology, yep. and um, uh, software programming. So yep. I guess that's where I have the ability to understand the technology side of things and the technical side of things as well mm. as the business side of things. Yeah, for sure. So an active bit of an interpreter. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So um, for those who are not familiar with J-Curve Solutions, we, we provide NetSuite across Australia and New Zealand, but we have the exclusive license for the small and medium business edition of the solution. So getting those business um, early on um, in their business cycle onto ERP uh, enterprise level solutions. Yeah, so ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning and often when I talk to people about ERP, they, the first impression is that it's really designed for the big end of town. It's, um, they're thinking about systems like SAP and systems from Oracle or Microsoft that are used by the banks and the government organizations. Yep. Um, nothing related to us. Uh, but really over the last um, probably almost 10 years, we've seen growth of um, those ERP providers offering small business additions. Mm. And we're actually seeing some ERP systems coming from the ground up just for small businesses. It's usually the same platform. The business, the small business edition will be the same platform like JCurve is based on NetSuite. Um, only with some modules disabled, some modules are relevant. Some, a lot of pre customization so we don't need all the builds and resources that a large organization may need or yep. the complexities that they need. And that's usually much, much simpler to implement. So it's not a big project to implement a small business edition of an ERP system. And of course, the cost is also yeah, relevant as well. Yeah, most definitely. So just with the agenda today, everyone, so basically what we're going to be following is we're going to start off with talking about planning your implementation, um, engaging with the right ERP implementation partner, organizing the right resources of your business when you do bring on an ERP, um, as well as some successful tips from Imbul about um, how to get the most out of your implementation. And, and we'll finish off with some questions and answers. So planning your implementation. So um, I get this question all the time um, from um, prospects and businesses who say, uh, when is the right time to start considering ERP? Now, we, we sort of covered this in our last webinar, but I think it's a good chance just to quickly cover off on it at the beginning. Um, when is the right time for an ERP implementation in Bull? We did talk about this in the last webinar at length and we went into a lot more detail, but um, in a high level, when I go into a business and I look at the systems they have, there are certain signs that will prompt me to think maybe we need to look at an ERP system. Um, mm. That would be things like, Obviously, capacity, the system's slowing down, their existing yep. system's slowed down, they can't handle the capacity or the volume of data that they have. Um, it could be when I see that people export data from their accounting inventory CRM system and manipulate it outside of the system and then maybe push it back because that tells me that there are processes that they actually need which the system doesn't do for them or there are reports and data insights they actually need they can't get out of their existing system. Um, Sometimes I see that they have um, many systems, too many systems, with an ecosystem of an accounting system like zero QuickBooks Online and an inventory and a point of sale and a website and a CRM system and then another, 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 and you end up with a bit too much complexity. 
yeah. um, and the solution of an ERP being an all-in-one um, can become can simplify things for them dramatically. Yeah. So um, yeah. So so when these businesses come to you with these issues, what's the the first step on that journey you take them on? So. I don't advocate change for the sake of change. Mm-hmm. I will always first make sure, and I suggest that everyone first make sure that you are making the best use you can out of what you've got. There is value in what you've got just because of the legacy of it being there. Yeah. So are there functions that you're not aware of? Are there other additions of it that you don't know about? Maybe you could upgrade. Um, are there, is there a different way to handle it? Um, if there isn't, and if we establish that the current system is just not going to cut it, then yes, let's consider an inner ERP system. And with that, I often suggest to get in touch and get a demo, even if it seems that the change is six or mm. 12 or 18 months away, just because you're starting as a business owner or as a business operator, you start to get informed and educate yourself. And when you get there in six months or 12 months, it's not going to be the first time that you hear things and you're going to make a lot more out of it. So you raised there the demonstrations. So um, when it comes to ERP, there's no real free trial in a way. It is that demonstration environment. What's, what's the reasoning that you give to, to your clients when they ask, you know, why can't I get a free trial and play around the system? To be honest, I don't think that you want a free trial with an ERP <laughs> system. I know with zero QuickBooks Online, my old, um, all the inventory systems, we go online, we sign up, we have a bit of a play and we get a feel. With an ERP system, I feel that we'd be, we'd be wasting your time a bit. Um, I much prefer to get someone who knows it and who knows my scenarios and what I want to see, sit there and show me exactly what I need to know. Yeah. It's just like sometimes think of it just like going into a very big theme park. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't just start exploring. You'd take a map, right? And you look at it and go, right, I'm interested in this, this and that. And what's mm-hmm. the best way to get there, right? Otherwise, mm-hmm. you'd just be wasting your time and you'd be potentially missing out on critical things. Yep, yep. So a bit of guidance there when looking into the system. Absolutely. Yeah, great. So moving on to the, to the next point, um, you know, in your experience, you, you've come across these businesses um, and obviously you recommend an ERP implementation partner. Why, is, why do you recommend this? Um, well, an implementation partner is... Um, you know, when it, most of the people here, I guess, are using accounting-only systems and considering mm. a change to an ERP. Uh, with your accounting-only system, your accountant or bookkeeper or yourself, you just set it up. With an ERP system, you're looking at something that really covers a lot more aspects of your business. Not Your accountant wouldn't know your sales process and couldn't help mm. you with that or mm. your purchasing process um, or your marketing and CRM side of things. A good a good implementation partner will work with you through those processes and they know the system very well and the options that it has mm. and will make sure that you're actually going to make the most of it. So if there are three mm. ways to do something in it, in the system, they will talk to you and help you decide which one's the right one for you. Mm. And, and a good implementation um, partner is not just at the beginning, are they? They're through the whole process. They are. So they will do a couple of things that, will add, that can add a lot of value to your business on top of the system itself is that uh, one is understanding best processes yep. so, um, or best practice processes, how to get stuff done rather than you telling them what you want. Mm. And the other is ongoing change. So 12 months after you've implemented the system, you're starting with a new product line, you're buying another business, you're changing how you're doing something, you identify some market opportunity. Your implementation partner knows your setup, how you're using the system, and can help you make sure you integrate the new processes, the new products into the system in the best way, and you're making the most out of it. Yep, fantastic. So they play a big, they play a big role at the end of the day. A, a good or a bad implementation partner can be the difference between success. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I can show you um, two businesses using the same system in the same industry, and one has a really good machine working for him, and mm. the other one's quite frustrated and feeling like they're working for the system. And the only difference is how the implementation got done. Yep. Okay. Fantastic. So, I, as a business, I've decided, you know, I want to go down the ERP route. 
Um, what sort of technical knowledge do I need? You know, do I need a substantial background like yourself, Imbel, um, in computer software to be able to run an ERP or what's the requirements from day one? Not at all, you don't. Um, to get started, I always suggest that you, find, you appoint a champion in your business. Mm -hmm. So you need someone who will look at the whole picture, will understand the requirements of everyone in the picture, will be in touch with the implementation partner to make sure all the requirements are being dealt with, that all the important questions are being asked, um, that all the important knowledge is being retained and documented, mm -hmm. that everything that we say, we'll do that later, gets recorded on the later list and gets revisited. Mm -hmm. um, so you need someone like that, a champion like that. Okay. And so this champion, if I go into my business um, and take a look at some of the, the, the qualities of, of my staff members, you know, what is the normal sort of skill set they have that makes them maybe a suitable candidate for the champ as the champion role um, when yeah. bringing on that ERP? Um, they'll need to have the definitely great communication is key because yep. you need to understand all the stakeholders and you need to communicate with the implementation partner. And these people come from very different worlds with different uh, viewpoints and you need to make sure um, you're really getting the correct information and conveying the correct information accurately between everyone. Yeah. Um, so they need to be confident to be able to ask all the hard questions. They can't be shy uh, because it's their job to reveal information and to understand exactly how things are going to work and press the important points. Uh, if someone doesn't have a person like that in the business or they don't have the capacity to take on another project, sometimes people hire me to do that. Mm. Um, I love being that uh, one to <laughs> ask all the hard questions. You know that. Yeah, I know. I've heard a few stories of you working with small businesses in that role. And yeah, you, you can you definitely know. see the glow on your face compared to, you know, your normal day role. But working with those small businesses, it seems to be a bit of a kick for you. Yeah, it is great. And it keeps you guys, the implementation partner, it keeps you guys running. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very true. Um, so we might uh, lastly touch on some successful implementation tips. So um, you mentioned the champion, you know, how can, how can a business embrace uh, bringing I guess on it to, Yeah, sort of to wrap it up, there'll be, I, I would give the three top tips listed here on the, uh, on the slide. Have a champion and get them involved early in the process. Yep. Um, be involved as a business owner with an open mind. So rather than telling the implementation partner, this is how I report on my stock and this is how I plan my uh, purchasing, um, ask them how other people do it. Learn. Uh, it's not about making the new system copy the processes you currently have in the business. It's about seeing how you can use that machine the best for your business. Um, and the last one is keep the spirit of change. So once you've implemented, mm. you need to have a very long list of things we left for later. Mm. Book in a time right away in three months to, to revisit that list. Go through those ideas. It's a fantastic uh, gift from your current self to your future self. And they will <laughs> really appreciate it. They will really appreciate all these great ideas. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. So I, uh, that's um that's all for the content today i think we might open up to some questions um that our participants may have um i've already got one here saying asking what is the average duration of an implementation um Imbel, i might get you to jump on that one quickly um, and then i'll also have a chat on that point as well yeah so i guess every implementation partner would be different but mm. um uh, jacob does their implementations we want sort of six eight Week? Yeah, yeah. So our our small business edition um, of NetSuite, which is titled J Curve ERP, um, has a uh, rapid implementation of eight to twelve weeks, where we take the business through a stage process, getting the fundamentals of the system that they need from day one. In stage one, get that up and running, um, and then stage two and stage three within those twelve weeks. So we really aim to um, not have a lot of disruption for the business so they can operate as usual um, while also getting them up to speed on the new system very quickly. Yeah, and I think uh, an important uh, thing to tell people about is how the implementation actually happens. And uh, one of what I actually quite like about the J-Curve implementation model is that you pre-book sessions across those eight weeks uh, mm. where different aspects will be covered. And that takes you through that journey of discovery and all the processes in the business and also mm. for the champion from the business to understand all these areas of the system. Yeah. It's pretty structured and I like that. 
Yeah, great. I've, I've just got another question from um, another uh, participant. Are there extensive use of APIs? So um, within the J-Curve system, it's all pre-modulated. It's all one single source. Um, it is open to API connection um, for, for different businesses, for different systems, if you need that. Now, we have pre-established connection points with all the major um, shopping carts, such as Shopify, WooCommerce, BigCommerce, Magento, um, as well as some third-party apps as well. Um, and more than happy to send through some further information on that. Um, I've just got another question here. Um, is the, an ERP a good solution for small businesses or is it only for bigger companies? Um, so, Imbo, I think we touched on that um, before, but um, very much it depends on, on where the business is at. So um, the j ERP very much is the next step after you zero your MYB. You're starting to hit those growing pain points um, in relation to visibility over what's going on in the business. Um, you might have some manual processes going on um, as well as the inability to scale. Um, you, you're spending time investing into increased labor rather than putting that money into other parts of the business to grow it and, and, and go on that, on that J curve in a way. And well, did you have anything to touch on that? No, I think you covered it pretty well. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, I'm just having a look through more questions here. Should the implementation partner specialize in only one business segment or go for a diversified specialization? Did you want to touch on that Imbol? Um, it's always good when an implementation partner has experience in your industry or in your market segment. segment. Uh, and that's exactly because of what I mentioned earlier, that they will be able to show you how other people do the things that you're doing. You're also going to spend a lot less time explaining what you're actually doing. So it doesn't need to be exactly the same mm. um, business as yourself, but if, they're in, if they've seen uh, similar industries before, it would be very beneficial. Yeah, great. So when you interview an implementation partner, it's a good idea to ask them about businesses similar. Here's my business. Have you worked with similar businesses? Mm -hmm. don't, satis don't be satisfied with just a yes. Ask what were the main issues? What were the main challenges? What mm -hmm. went great for them? Get a bit more stories because that's what's going to tell you that they've really been and done that. Yeah, and, and for our, us ourselves, uh, we're very we're strong in, in certain areas and we have a, a large variety of case studies on our website um, that we can send through further information to show you who we've actually worked with and we can break down into in some similarities between your business and the businesses that, that we currently work with. Um, so I might leave it there for questions for the moment. Um, There's a good question here, Andrew, about yeah. modeling um, that we can touch on. Yeah, okay, do you wanna jump on that one then? Absolutely. I think one of the wonderful things about upgrading from the accounting only entry level type system to an ERP system is reporting. Um, mm. First, because you have all your data in one system, and so mm. you're able to do a lot more sophisticated reporting than when you have data in different systems and you can't report on everything together. And also because typically, and NetSuite is a good example, they have really, really strong reporting engines where you can build very sophisticated reports schedule them to get out to certain people at certain times, um, exception reports that will only show when there's relevant information on them. So you can get a lot of power out of the reporting tools in a system like Jacob or next week. Yeah, great. Um, I've got a couple more that are coming through. Um, what do I need to prepare before going into an implementation? Do I need to look at cleaning up my data first? That's a very good question. Uh, Let's have a look at the data and then decide if we want to clean it up or not. Mm -hmm. Some things are worth cleaning so that we don't bring across with us a whole history of stuff we don't even use. Sometimes we want to add information to it. For example, we want to group our products or create some connections between them that are going to be very useful for us in the new system for reporting or for smarter pricing or that sort of thing. Sometimes there are things we better not touch because if we start removing suppliers, but there are products that are linked to those suppliers and there's stock in that and whatever, we can get into trouble with data integrity. So it's about looking at that data and deciding what we want to clean up and what we don't want. Yeah, great. Um, I've got one here. What is usually the, the cause of moving from J-Curve to NetSuite? Now, this is more a product-related question. So yep. uh, J-Curve ERP is, is our pre-modulated small business edition. So it's got the cause of the system. It's got the infantry, the CRM, the financials all pre-packaged up. 
Um, and to be eligible for that product, it's under 20 users of the system and one single ABN. So what might happen is a business may start on the J-curve and a lot of them do the entry point um, and usually they've hit that, that those pain points and they want to move into the market at, a, at an affordable price. They go through that lower implementation cost and as they grow and potentially go into multiple entities or over 20 users, they move into the NetSuite mid-market. Now, that's just a, a, it's a simple licensing transfer. There's no further implementation costs. What happens is you're able to um, access and purchase um, extended modules within the NetSuite system and, and take your, your business on that, on that growth path. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've had, we've had quite a few different businesses um, go on that journey and, and make that transition. With the risk of sounding like I'm selling Jacob, I'm not. One of the things I really like about Jacob <laughs> is that... I know, I know, don't worry. <laughs> you know, but I want others to know too. When I talk to businesses, I tell them the bad as well, not only the good. But yeah. one of the things I like about Jacob is that um, seamless upgrade to NetSuite. It's a bit of a future-proofing thing because when you need to upgrade to NetSuite because you need more functionality, like maybe manufacturing functionality, you're not really changing anything. It's just a new license that you need to sign, but there's no data migration. The, the login remains it's the same. You're really already on NetSuite. Mm. It's just the license change. So you know that your business is on a system that can serve them for a few more steps of growth, which is fantastic. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, any more questions, feel free to send them through to um, or contact J-Curve Solutions or ConvertWorks um, and look forward to seeing you in the next uh, webinar. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you Thanks for your time, Imbul.